Hi, it's Chester at Blue PKN Computer Training. And in this video, we're gonna look at adding commas to cell values in Excel. We're gonna look at various different scenarios, starting with adding a comma to the beginning of cell text, adding a comma to the end of cell text, adding comma between words, adding a comma after X number of characters, adding a comma before the first numeric character, adding a comma before the first text character, looking at comma separated format, and how do you return a number with comma separated format within a formula? And then last of all, looking at the text join function. Now, because I'm covering quite a lot in this video, I will leave a table of contents in the description of the video. So let's start at the beginning comma at beginning of cell text. So there's two ways we can do this. First way is with a formula. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to concatenate the product ID with a comma. So I say equals and in quotation marks, I put my comma, then I put an ampersand, and then I click in the cell that I want to prefix with a comma. And then if I copy that down, you can see each of the product IDs now starts with a comma. Now you can actually do this without a formula. If I take this value here and copy it, and then I'm gonna type a comma in and paste the value in, and then I'm gonna use flash fill. And the way you can do that is go up to the data tab on your ribbon, and click on this flash fill button, and that will copy that pattern of characters down the rest of the column for you. The advantage of using a formula is if I made a change to one of the product IDs, it would automatically update, whereas Flash Fill ignores the change. Now, how do you put a comma at the end of cell text? It's very similar. What I would do is concatenate the product ID using the ampersand after that cell reference with a comma, and the comma again goes in quotation marks. If I copy that down work for the rest of the product IDs. I can also use flash fill if I copy this. Put a comma at the end. And there is a shortcut key for flash fill, control E. You can see that works. Okay, let's move on to the next example. Comma between words, we want a comma between these names. And I would use substitute for this example, substitute replaces existing text with new text in a text string. First argument is text, so where's the text you want to substitute characters in? That's our name, comma. Old text, what are you looking to replace? Well, I'm looking to replace the spaces or the space in each of the names. New text, what are you gonna replace the space with? We could just put a comma, but I'm gonna put a comma and a space. Instance number we don't need to use because we want to replace all instances of a space. I close the bracket, press enter, copy this down. You can see it puts a comma between each name. Now you may have an example where the first name and the last name are in separate cells and you want to join them together in one cell with a comma in between. We're gonna have last name, comma, first name. So we're gonna write a formula for this and I'm gonna say equals this cell here concatenated, and I'm using the ampersand symbol for that, with a comma and a space, then concatenated with the first name. If I press enter, it's exactly what I get. In this example, we want to put a comma at a specific position within the product IDs. We want to place the comma in position five, so after four characters. And the easiest way to do this is to use the replace function. So old text is the text that you're gonna put a comma in. Start number is the position where you'd like your comma. So I'll say five. Number of characters. Well, that's asking the number of characters that you want to replace. Now we don't actually want to replace any characters within the product ID. So we put a zero in. And our new text is going to be a comma. So I close my bracket and you can see it puts the comma in in the fifth position. Copy it down and it does so for the other product IDs. You can also use flash fill. What I would do is copy this product ID, paste it in here, 
put a comma in, in the fifth position, select the value that includes the comma, control E to flash fill, and it does exactly the same thing as our formula does. Now, in this example, things are getting slightly more complicated because we want to add a comma before the first numeric character. And the first numeric character is in a different position in each of these product IDs. So the first job is to find the position of the first numeric character. And we can use the search function to achieve this. Search returns the number of the character at which a specific character or text string is first found, reading left to right. It's not case sensitive. Find text. Well, we want to find any numeric character. Now, normally with the search function, you just specify a single find text value but we want to be able to find any numeric character. So I'm going to create an array of values for my find text argument. And to do that, I need to open a brace bracket and I'm just going to put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Close with a brace bracket, comma. Within text is our product ID. Start number we don't need to use because we want to start searching for the beginning of the product ID text string. Now, if I close the bracket and press enter, you can see that in Excel 365, it spills its values into surrounding cells. Now, if you're not in Excel 365, don't worry, it won't do what it's just done here, but the formula will eventually work. But with Excel 365, it's quite clear to see what's happening. It's looking for the position of each of those numeric characters. So one was found in position 10, two was found in position seven, three was found in position 11, and four was found in position five. Now, the first numeric character is found in the lowest position returned by the search formula. In other words, position five. So what I want to do is return the smallest value from this array of values. And I can do that using the min function. So I'm going to put this search formula within the min function. You can see that it actually returns an error and that's because search returns some errors in its results. So to deal with those errors, I'm going to put search within if error. And if error will allow me to mask those value errors with an empty text string. The second argument for if error is value if error. And I'm going to say that's an empty text string. I need two close brackets at the end, press enter, and it returns position five. And if you look in this product ID, the first numeric character is in position five. And if I copy this down, it does the same calculation on each of these other product IDs. So the next step is to use the replace function. So the first argument in the replace function is old text. This is the old text that I want to do some replacing in, comma. The start number is returned by the formula that we already have in this formula, comma. The number of characters we want to replace is zero. We don't want to replace any of the characters that are already there in the product ID, but in this fifth position, we want to put some new text, which is gonna be a comma. And then I close the bracket at the end, press enter, and you can see, that it's put a comma before the first numeric character in each of these product IDs. Now it works until you get a product ID that doesn't have a numeric character, and then you get the value error. So I can put the whole thing within the if error function, using that function twice in this formula now. So value is my existing formula, comma. Value of error will be the original product ID. Copy this down. And I no longer get that value error where we don't have a numeric character. Okay, in this example, we want to place a comma before the first text character in the product ID. Now, the formula to find the position of the first text character is even more involved than the last example I gave you. And I have created a video to explain how this formula works. I'll leave a link to that video down in the description of this video 
It took about 11 minutes to explain, so I don't really want to do that again here. So now I have the position of the first text character. I can use the replace function again. So old text is my product ID. A start number is returned by this formula, comma. Number of characters I want to replace is zero again, comma. New text is my comma. Scroll over a little bit so you can see it. Press enter. And now you can see it puts a comma before the first text character in each of these product IDs, except where there are no text characters. I get an NA error. So I can use if NA to mask the error. And if there is an NA error, I want to return the original product ID. Copy this down and I get rid of the NA error. Now in this example, I want to apply comma style formatting to these numbers. And to do that, I'm just gonna select the numbers. And the easiest way to do that is to use this comma style button upon the home tab of your ribbon. And you can see it makes the numbers a lot easier to read. The bigger the number, the easier it is to read using this comma style format. If I want to get rid of the decimal places, I can decrease them up here. Just take that format off. Another way of applying that format would be to right click on the cells, go to format cells or control one on your keyboard, go to the number category under the number tab, use thousand separators here and you can choose your decimal places there as well. Now lead to this idea of applying comma style formatting, we want to create a little concatenation formula here that says total quantity sold colon and then the result of the sum of these values. So total quantity sold, and then concatenate that with a sum of these quantity sold. And you can see that even though our values over here are correctly formatted, the Texturing here doesn't apply the correct format to our quantity sold numbers. Now to get around this, you can use the text function. So I'm putting my sum formula within the text function and text allows me to apply a number format to my text value. And the format goes in quotation marks and it would look like this. So hash, comma, hash, hash, zero. Close your quotation marks, close your bracket at the end there, and you can see we get a proper format for our quantity sold. Last sheet for this video, just gonna look at text join, a function that is available in Excel 365. Now what I want to do is I want to get all of this information about Stan into one cell, text join. First argument is delimiter. So what do we want to separate these different values with? Well, we'll say a comma and a space. Ignore empty is the second argument. By default, it does ignore empty cells. We don't have any here, but we can just skip over that argument. And then we can select all the cells that we want to join together, B3 to B7. And if I press enter, you can see it creates one text string with all of those values separated by a comma. Now, if I didn't want a comma between the first and the last name, I could use the substitute function. So text is returned by our text join function. Old text is a comma. New text, what do we want to replace it with? Nothing, an empty text string. And instance number is one because we want to replace the first comma only. If I press enter, you can see now I don't have a comma between Stan and Fletcher. Now in the next example, we've got three transactions with up to three purchases, and I want to combine all purchases into one cell. Now I can use text join for this. So my delimiter is gonna be a comma and a space. Ignore empty, well I want to, that's the default, so I can just pass over that argument. Text one, and just select all the cells in that row, close bracket, press enter. And if I copy this down, 
It includes all purchases in one sound. Last one, unique names. So I've got a list of names. You can see most of the names are repeated. I want to extract the unique names from this list and show them all in one cell. So I use a combination of the unique function here and you need to use the array argument to extract unique values from a column. Then I can use text join, specify a delimiter of a comma and a space, nor empties, text one returned by my unique function, close the bracket, press enter, got all the unique names in one cell, separated by a comma. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please subscribe and I'll see you next video.